Hi guys, Kurt Provost here, your guide to all things new skin. This video is for all the guys who are looking for a basic understanding of their skin and some good habits to apply on a daily basis so that they can have healthy, vibrant, radiant skin without too much fuss. It comes about thanks to a fellow viewer requesting some tips and tricks to have great looking skin without too much effort. And he wanted me to help a brother out. So this is Male Skincare 101 to help all the brothers out. And you know what? We don't need a lot of help because nature's kind of working in our favor a bit. We do tend to have thicker and a bit tougher skin than women. And our skin does tend to age a bit better than women. That's very frustrating for the women because they've invested a lot of time and energy and money into having the opposite result. But you know what? You guys generally live longer than us, so just let us have this. <laughs> I think there's two reasons. Well, there's probably many other reasons, but these are the two that I can spot as to why men's skin tends to age a bit better uh, in the long run. And the first one is we don't wear makeup. It's great for covering things up or for enhancing things, but it's not there to make your skin healthier. And it tends to congest, it tends to clog up pores, and to get the makeup off, you tend to have to use products that are terrible for your skin. Things with alcohol in it. In general, if you can avoid putting alcohol in your skin, please do that because it's very drying. It can be very irritating. And if you do that on a daily basis, regularly using harsh ingredients to strip away the makeup, it's just a lot more wear and tear that guys generally don't go through. So there's one reason. The other reason is most of us are shaving on a daily basis. Why is that a good thing? Well, it is helping to exfoliate. That's one of the reasons. It's helping to exfoliate a large portion of our face. Now, exfoliating, what's the deal with that? You've probably heard that that's a good thing and it can be a bad thing as well. And you are right if you have heard that. So in order to understand exfoliation, we need to understand the skin first. So the skin comes with three distinct layers. So the epidermis, the outer layer, the dermis, and the hypodermis. So the skin is actually created in the dermis and then it works its way up through layers of skin. So the epidermis isn't just one layer, it's multiple layers of skin with the lowest layer being the freshest, the youngest skin. And as it works its way up, it is aging and it's actually dead skin that we see here. So what happens is you remove that dull outer layer and it reveals the more youthful, radiant, new skin that is much smoother, of course. If you over exfoliate, you're removing too much of that new skin, which number one can be painful. It can cause a lot of irritation for your skin, can disrupt the natural skin barrier. It can allow for penetration of too much UV, too much uh, bacteria, all sorts of different things there that it can create a lot of issues in the long term and short term as well. So where is uh, somewhere that we're going wrong with our shaving habits is when we are going against the grain. So quite often when we are shaving uh, our neck area, we turn the blade over and upside down and we are shaving against the grain. Now, why would we do that? We do that because it gets a closer cut. So a lot of people will shave up like that. That's against the grain. It gives a great smooth cut, but it tends or can have the tendency of removing too many layers of skin, but also it cuts the hair too close to the skin and it can promote the hair instead of growing out of the skin, growing into the skin. So it can promote uh, ingrown hairs and cause a lot of irritation. So if you just want a very simple way of fixing uh, skin irritation, stop cutting against the grain. That is number one. Now, what way is the grain? Because everyone's slightly different, particularly when it comes to the neck. Grow your stubble for a couple of days so that you can see the individual hairs and you will notice that they are all moving in a certain direction. Now, for me, it's all down here. So I shave down uh, moving with the grain and on the neck, it gets a bit messy <laughs> and it's gonna be different for you. But here I get like this swirl, it's in a circle. So whenever I'm shaving and I, I cut myself or I create some irritation, it's gonna be here and here because that's where the grain becomes a bit confusing. So the principle here is just go with the grain whenever you are shaving. So that brings us to aftershave. Now, a couple of words on aftershave. 
In general, they tend to contain alcohol. Alcohol, as I have mentioned before, is very stressing for the skin. It dries it out, uh, it can irritate it, it can disrupt the pH balance. And uh, as such, if you're doing that on a daily basis, it will have a dehydrating effect on your skin. Now, the other thing about aftershave is that generally they are scented. And whenever you are using a scented product, err on the side of less is more. Because if there's one thing I've learned with working with women on a daily basis for over a decade now, it's that uh, they are very sensitive to smell. So yes, they like nice smells, but that doesn't mean we should drown ourselves in that nice smell. We should use a very small amount and less is definitely more in this regard. So with aftershave, I think it's better if you use a toner and then a serum and a moisturizer, which I'm going to get into. But first let's talk about the pH of our skin because you may or may not have known it, the skin actually has a pH level. So it is slightly acidic. And the reason being, or one of the reasons is that the skin is the first line of defense. And so we've got this force field on our skin. So it's this environment that anything that lands on here, if it doesn't like an acidic environment, it's not gonna survive. So it's that first point of call for our body. Now, the issue with that is that many of the things that we use on our skin don't have the same pH. And what that does is create a lot of irritation, a lot of unnecessary irritation. So if you are using soap to wash your face, stop it because soap is super alkaline. Soap is over here on the spectrum and then acidic is over here. They're opposite ends of the spectrum. Neutral is in the middle. And what that means is it, irritates the skin, it dries out the skin, and it means the skin has to work extra hard to revert the pH back to acidic rather than alkaline. Now, why are soaps alkaline if our skin is acidic? Well, soaps were never designed to be used on human skin. They only started to be used after doctors uh, a long time ago realized that if they wash their hands with soap in between operating on patients, the patients tended to die less. <laughs> And that's because it killed the bacteria. Yes, soap is great for that. It's great for washing clothes or dishes or whatever else. It's not great for your skin, particularly on the face, which is um, a bit thinner and it's a bit more sensitive than the skin on the body. So you can find pH balanced soaps. That means they are balanced to the pH of your skin, which is more acidic. And you can use all of New Skin's products are pH balanced in that regard, so they're all slightly acidic, and you'll find your skin will be much smoother, much more hydrated, and less irritated. So right there are a couple of things that you can implement right now to stop the irritation or issues that you're having with your skin. But the habit that is going to bring you the greatest long-term result for your skin is implementing the four-step process of skincare, and that is cleansing, toning, treating with a serum, and hydrating with a moisturizer. That's a basic skincare routine that you can use on a daily basis from now onwards that will pay great dividends in the future and also in the present. So what do I mean by those things? Well, number one, the foundation of good skincare is to make sure you have cleaned your skin properly. And as we have just worked out, soap is not cutting it. Yes, it will clean the skin and kill off a bunch of things, but it's not in your favor. So you need to use a cleanser that is number one pH balanced, number one gentle enough to gently exfoliate the skin. The Lumispar is what I use every single day. It's a, it's a gadget, it's a technology, which I made a video about here. I have many videos on my channel about that. So it just makes the process easy for me. But in regards to someone just starting out, so they don't want to invest into a uh, beauty device right now, but maybe in the future, someone just starting out, then I would recommend 180 face wash for them, Be particularly for guys, because we've got that thicker skin. This is quite an active um, cleanser, and that's because it's got active vitamin C, 10% active vitamin C. Now, vitamin C, no doubt you have heard about before, it's an extremely powerful ingredient. The problem with it is it's really volatile. So once you expose it to oxygen, it starts breaking down and loses its effectiveness. The great thing about 180 and the reason why I recommend it is that it has a free flowing vitamin C that doesn't break down. It's just, it gets activated when you uh, mix it with some 
some water and cleanse your face. So it's for use in the shower. It's really easy. And for guys, I think this is the one that you're gonna get the best return on straight away. You'll see a result from it straight away because vitamin C has that uh, glowing radiant effect on the skin. It helps to defend from free radical damage from UV. So if you're out in the sun a lot, this is going to help you. It helps to lighten the skin uh, from past sun damage as well. It's also helping to stimulate collagen production. Collagen, as you've probably heard, is the most common protein found in the body and it's a large amount of it is found in our skin. It makes up the structure of our skin. So if you've got plenty of collagen, then your face is going to have a lot of uh, definition and character is going to be filled out. However, we are losing about 1.5% of collagen per year. And that's if you're doing everything right. If you're smoking, drinking, eating crappy food, eating sugars, then it's going in spending a lot of time in the sun, then you're going to be losing a lot more than 1.5% per year. So you'll need all the help you can get. So the 180 face wash is the best way to get started in my opinion. Then you want to do step number two, which is tone the skin. Well, why do you tone? It is restoring the skin to its natural pH if it has changed from the cleanser. It's making sure all the cleanser is gone and it is uh, minimizing the pores. So the pores are those holes that you see and some people have large pores, some people have small pores. Uh, this contains ingredients that will help to minimize the pores. You can never get rid of the pores and you don't want to. They're an important part of the skin, but you can have them close up a little bit. And so toner is fantastic for that. Think of it like this. You've got to use a primer of some sort before you put down the coat of paint. And that's the same thing with the toner. So you cleanse and you tone. Now the toner I recommend for guys is the Nutrisentials Here You Glow. I'm going to put all of this in the uh, comment section or in the, the details below and links so you can get access to it. But Here You Glow toner is really affordable. Uh, it contains AHAs, alpha hydrolysis. How I, uh, whatever alpha something acids <laughs> I'll write it in below and uh, that helps with cellular turnover so it's stimulating that fresh creation of the skin so you have that really bright radiant healthy skin so from there you are ready for step number three which is treatment phase so if you are using a beauty device of some sort you would use that now because your skin is perfectly clean and ready to receive whatever active ingredients you want to put on it. So what we're going to use in this stage is a serum. Now a serum is the most expensive skincare product that you will find out of a complete skincare range and that's because it contains the highest percentage of active ingredients. Active ingredients are the ingredients that are actually changing the skin for the better. They're actually doing something. And they're a botanical blend of ingredients, depending on the serum, that uh, will have great anti-aging benefits, or maybe it's hydrating, maybe it's healing. Different serums for different purposes. The ones I recommend for guys to get started with is the Nutrisentials Celtrex. The reason being is that this is a great all-round serum fantastic for healing past damage, but also for protecting the skin and uh, preventing future damage. It's super versatile, this one, and it's really hydrating. So sometimes I won't even use a moisturizer after this one because this serum will be enough. It just uh, really hydrates the skin. So depending on what you need, it may be perfect as is, and you may not need a moisturizer afterwards, or you'll move on to the fourth step, which is hydration, which is moisturizing. So moisturizers serve a couple of different purposes, but the first and foremost is usually it's hydrating the skin. And the second one is it's creating a protective barrier that's kind of locking in all the goodness that you, which is why you find often daytime moisturizers and nighttime moisturizers, because a daytime moisturizer will be focused more on environmental protection with uh, some SPF factor in it. So it's protecting from the sun or from blue light damage as all the Nutrisential range are doing, because that's a huge issue now because we're staring into our phones all the time they're emitting blue light that's constantly putting stress and pressure on our skin and the nighttime moisturizers often they are much richer uh, much more hydrating because nighttime is when our skin is repairing itself so they are supporting those natural functions and 
In regards to guys, which moisturizer is going to be best for you, it totally depends on your skin type, but I find guys really like the Nutrisentials range. It's a great basic range. Uh, also, Enhancer, the aloe vera gel, is what I used for many, many years because it's very light. It absorbs into the skin. It doesn't make you feel like you've got some sort of sticky thing on your skin like a lot of moisturizers will do. And so, uh, I enjoyed that to get started into the skincare world and it has great results. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you found this useful. This is the Male Skincare 101, helping brothers out around the world. If you like this, if you'd like more content like this, please uh, comment below and let me know. If you want to get your hands on any of these products, I've created a special guys-only package below for a few different markets, or just send me a message for something a bit more tailored. My name is Kurt Provost. I am your guide to all things new skin. I'll see you in a future video. Ciao, guys.